I am going to talk about a mixed methods digital humanities and art space research project, which resulted in a video art installation in May 2021. The installation, Tuberculous Imaginaries, was a public facing project that brought to the foreground some concerns that guide my dissertation, the tuberculosis specimen. However, the successes of the installation should be understood in part of the larger process based research project. For this video, I'm going to briefly outline the overlapping interests of the digital humanities and arts based research methods. I will also go into so, some detail of the project's ethical drive. Um, from here, I'll describe the installation itself before moving into a more concrete description of, of its limitations and potential futures. Tuberculous Imaginaries is the result of the interweaving of arts-based research and design-forward methods. The digital humanities emphasis on theoretical qualities of design writ large, from web design to coding to graphic design, has driven a shift in an expansion of tenure guidelines for human assembly institutions. I'm not the first person to argue for the installate infusion of the arts and digital humanities, and in this vein, I want to point to the excellent work of Molly Morin and Nikki Stevens at Dartmouth's Digital Justice Lab in, the, in their creation of the Haystack Creative Futures Group, which has helped create a cohort of like-minded scholars working between uh, DH and the arts. Arts-based research builds on this flexible conception of knowledge production to address theoretically challenging theoretically and conceptually challenging research questions, what Holly Wills has termed the theorist practitioner. Important for Wills and for my own work is the model of theoretically interested is the model of theoretically interested but methodologically unique approaches to different kinds of issues. Arts-based research helps me answer woolly questions like, if a primary source is unethically derived, how should I approach it? This flexibility and fluidity and recursiveness of creative labor enables a novel turn that produces useful arguments for future scholarship. Usually when I write about arts-based research, I find myself speaking in the abstract. So I want to take a minute to think about how arts-based methods facilitate my scholarly interventions. To do this, I want to quickly examine a pair of images which depict lupus vulgaris, a skin disease that is, uh, or a manifestation of tuberculosis that happens on the skin. These images are examples of clinical photography. They represent the disease and its symptoms for the purpose of diagnosis. But there is a problem. The disease cannot be visually separated from the subject's body. Modern medicine's visual epistemics need the body of the subject. And when I attempt to remove the body of the subject, like I did in this previous uh, project that I, this previous photo essay that I developed, the entire image becomes frustratingly opaque. At the center of my research is an ethical problem. Modern medicine's epistemics depend on the sick body, and medical researchers, at least prior to the codification of informed consent in the post-war period, have a long history of mistreating their subjects. The issue is that the knowledge produced from the body of the subject produces value for researchers and institutions, and that the knowledge remains valuable for archives, museums, and medical libraries. Returning to the images of lupus vulgaris, the subjects who are imaged are variously given different forms of anonymity based on the way their bodies have been photographed. The issue is twofold. First is a problem of medical ethics, of past medical ethics. Did these patients consent to their image being reproduced for medical needs? And second, a problem of continued exploitation. Did these patients expect their likenesses to be displayed at, the digital, at a digital humanities conference in ways that critiques but ultimately reifies their academic utility? This brings me to the installation, which overlaps these kind of images in ways that afford a spatial montage of elements. So there are two projectors on one wall that project onto one wall and one that projects uh, onto another. I've been trying to learn uh, video installation as an extension of my previous career as an experimental filmmaker. I want to develop ways that dislodge a spectacularist or are common to medical, the medical museum. As new museological scholars, of the past three decades have argued, the museum's emphasis on the artifact as a way to transmit some knowledge about the past deserves continued questioning. In the case of human remains, this leads to questioning the work of people like Gunther von Hagens and his very popular body worlds. My issue with this kind of indexing and provenance of medical specimens is that undergirding these arguments is a system are systems of violence. Historically, BIPOC subjects have been exploited by medical scientists, including the theft of their bodies after death and their more common use in medical research, um, just sort of generally. Um, 
What I did for tuberculous imaginaries was to kind of was to think of different kinds of material, graphic and textual. Um, I drew on tuberculosis specifically because it's the main topic of my dissertation, a thread that was possible thanks to the fact that lupus vulgaris, which I showed earlier, is a manifesta manifestation of the tuberculosis bacilli on the skin. I drew upon a Hathi Trust collection of around 700 books and found images and their corresponding textual elements. I wanted these objects to interact in non-deterministic ways, so I made each projector unique and overlapping with material of different lengths. One projector showed uh, Ken Burns inspired zoom, so another displayed markup of a few sources, and the last displayed images of clinical professors, professionals as I saw themselves. So this showed zooms, this had text, and then this had the images of the medical professionals. Each of these effects does something different. They think through the ways the subjects are transformed into research objects, and think about how those representations are very different than the men and women who work for their care. If I'm being honest, I'm disappointed in this project if only because it feels like a series of drafts which do not converge into a whole object. Part of this is by design. I want friction. I want to have friction to generate discussion and to use this for future research. Before I finish, I want to point to my biggest, stickiest conceptual problem. I depend on the same objects which I critique. I reify the practices that produce value from the sick, the dying subject, and the dead, the sick, the dying, and the dead. These objects produce value as a means to further my academic career. And my dog is pulling me, so. Um, tuberculous Imaginaries tries to, but I suspect fails at, divorcing the exploited subject in ways that affirm the right to be unknown. Future work will continue to iterate, however successfully with this problem, with the goal of always keeping the biomedical subject's autonomy and consent and focus. Thank you.